Right, we had Brett Finch, Jeff Lima, Ryan Hoffman. You know, we just had those players come come from where I'm from, and you know, to have to be playing with those type of players, you know, that you'd, you know that I've been watching in the NRL, um, that was special. And hi guys, I'm Harrison Hansen, um, and this is a breakdown of my rugby league career so far. I, uh, I was I started off at Folly Lane, so I just just before a bit of my background, so I came over here. Um, my dad, Salford Star, my dad from New Zealand, uh, when I was uh, about five. So we came over here uh, to Salford when I was five. Um, me and my sister and my mum, dad, probably from the ages of, of, of you know five, six, seven, and watching my dad at the Willows and stuff. And um, obviously, I was always gonna, I was always gonna start playing rugby myself. You know, I, I don't think my dad really pushed me. I think it was just, it was just inevitable, really. So uh, yeah, I got to that play for Foyle Lane up in Swinton. Uh, that's where we live. Uh, you know, that's where I grew up in Swinton. I played for Folly Lane all through my junior career. Um, well, the, the early years of my of, of starting rugby stayed there until probably until I was about 15, and then the age of 15, uh, a Wigan scout, you know, watched one of my games and, and uh, you know got me over to Wigan on the scholarship. Yeah, I joined Wigan, joined Wigan at 15 on the scholarship. You know, played back then it was like under 17s, um, so you did like. Uh, you did like a year on the scholarship and then you went to the under-17s. Yeah, man, and that team that we had, we were coached by uh, Dennis Press was our coach at the time. And man, we had a great team. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of players in that team that um, went on to, to play Super League at different clubs. So um, we ended up winning that grand final. Uh, we, we, I think we played Hull, Hull of Sin and, and that grand final and uh, we won 56-0. So, um, you know, well, we, had a, we had a really stacked team, really. And... Um, that was great, and then from there, I sort of progressed, and, and uh, I signed my first contract for Wigan when I was 18, back in 2004. So yeah, that's when my sort of career took off. Started uh, 2004. Uh, my debut game was against Wakefield uh, at, the, it was at the JJB back then, but um, yeah, played against. Uh, you know, I was back row then, and uh, came on, and I was defending Dave Solomona. So uh, you know, for a first, you know, for a player to. It's a, you know, it's first play to play up against. You know, I think there was no one bigger than Dave So, so um, yeah, there was an experience. Yeah, and then obviously I think I've, I've, I did well in that game. And then the second game, next game was Salford, and coach at the time he, he gave me another chance, so put me in. And uh, oh God, yeah, played. I went to Salford, and uh, yeah, scored my first try right in front of my dad. So uh, my dad was was with all his mates, and um, yeah, that was a it was a special feeling, and it was. It was quite fitting that you know the first club that my dad came to. I was that was my first try, so no, that was special. And um, but yeah, but then you know I was playing with Adrian Lamb. I was playing uh, Brett Dallas, Carney, Tez Newton. You know I was you know I was the young I was the young young buck coming through then. So I had a lot of experienced players around me, and uh, I think that that really sort of helped me help me in that stage of my career. Really, um, just getting the advice off you know Andy Farrell and, and Terry O'Connor and people like that. Um, you know, there's, there's not many better players that you can get advice off. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, 2004, so f- five, six, seven, eight. Um, obviously, we had uh, went through different coaches, you know, Millwood and and, and Nobby and stuff, and you know the up, the, the really up and down season that we had with uh, the 06 you know, with Millwood, nearly getting relegated or in relegation. So and that was uh, that was an experience to, to, to go through. And obviously, when we signed. Um, when Nobby came over as head coach, you know he changed a lot of things. Uh, he improved our defence, and that back end of the year, he brought Stu Field, and and uh, it kind of just it gave us that lift that we needed, and then we got out of that relegation spot. And uh, yeah, and then from there, oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, we were really probably just the the, the nearly team. You know, we always we'd always make the playoffs, but we'd get knocked out straight away, and uh, that was kind of frustrating, really, because the last sort of final that. I'd, I wasn't involved with, but the last final it was 2004 when uh, obviously Wigan lost. Um, I was there, I was at the game, but yeah, never never had any sort of finals games up until um, you know obviously the following year it was 2010. So yeah, from seven eight nine, uh, we just wasn't really getting anywhere, and um, you know, and obviously a big call that Wigan we, we should have. So obviously, yeah, and then Wigan uh, got Madge Michael Maguire over. Uh, yeah, he, he put Sean Wayne as assistant coach. Uh, mate, that was the two best coaches uh, that you know, two best coaches that I've had in my career. How he transformed that team, Maguire, 
he's an absolute great, he's a great coach, a great te technician, and, and uh, you know, really smart, and he's, he's a he's a man on man sort of people person. So he knew how to manage the team well. Obviously, two ten, um, we went, through, we were completely unstoppable. Really, it was the hardest preseason that I'd ever done in my whole career up until then. Because he brought over the uh, Melbourne Storm wrestle. You know, wrestle wasn't um, there wasn't really much wrestle over here in Super League, was there? So um, when uh, when Madge brought over his uh, sort of Mal Melbourne Storm style wrestling over, that was something to behold. Really, uh, you know, full on two hour sessions, just ripping into each other, smashing each other. Um, it was it was the hardest hardest I've ever trained. But in saying that, it was the best that. I ever felt, and, and as a team, we were all that fit, we were that strong, and that really sort of helped cemented that that year. We really in two ten, we were just we were going through teams, and we were you know we were going through teams of our defence, winning winning games, and and, and our defence was was really key to that, and it was because of all this wrestle that we were doing. So come to the finals, mate. We uh we we, had, we got there, and obviously we played Saints in the two ten final, and uh ended up winning, mate. And that was my first sort of experience of, of, of silverware and, and to walk out at Old Trafford. I know, uh, I know a few of the boys have said, like Jai, when, he's, when he walked out at Old Trafford uh, for Cass. Right? There's no better feeling um, than just walking out of that tunnel because it's really quiet. So you stand in that tunnel just waiting for the uh, whoever's singing, whatever. And then as you come walking out, it's just like you're, just, like you're stuck in a little gun. As soon as, you, as soon as you come out, boom, that crowd, the atmosphere, it's on top of you. It just really hits you. It's like a ton of bricks at face, man. It's it's great. It's it's really it's really uh, special to sort of to get to that to get to Old Trafford and and obviously the next stage is, is to win it. You know, um, you, you never want to come away disappointed. But you no, know, looking for luckily for me, um, you know, we won that two ten and uh, that was one of the best feelings I've ever had. So just going through there, uh, 2011, obviously. We did the Challenge Cup and uh, we, yeah, we, we got to Wembley. And again, mate, that's the first time I walked out of Wembley. And the atmosphere is different to Old Trafford. Old Trafford is really on top of you. Just being at Wembley, just walking out of Wembley, it's, it's, uh, that was a new experience and mate, it's huge. Yeah, mate, we scored some great tries and stuff like that. And uh, to win that as well, to win that again with the team. And again, it was, it was Sean Wayne, Madge as coaching, as the coaching staff. Uh, we just had a great, we had a great year, a uh, great couple of years. Right? We had Brett Finch, Jeff Lima, Ryan Hoffman. You know, we just had those players come, come from where I'm and, you know, to have to be playing with those type of players, you know, that, you know, that I'd been watching in NRL. Um, that was special and it's kind of, I see it now from, like from back then, just when I look at the teams that we had um, and the players that we had back in 2010, 11, 12, I think it's just it's 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 gone missing a bit really the sort of, uh, like now to now um, you know you just don't you know to, to have three to have three top NRL players in your team and and, and people and you know we had Paul Deacon you had Tommy Lula we had you know, we had we had Pat Richards it's just you know the list goes on so we had a great team and um, I was fortunate enough to be uh, playing. With all these guys, you know Sam, Tompkins, Joel, and all them. So it was a uh, it, it was a great time. Uh, come 2013, uh, Magic gone, but Wayne took over, and Wayne was uh, my, it was it was the most obvious choice to take over. He is is he is a great coach, passionate, everything, uh, everything you see on, on TV. Uh, that's what he's like in normal normal life and, and off the field and stuff like that. So uh, it was really great playing under Wayne. You know, I, was, I really had my, some good years. I had my good years at under, playing under him. And uh, yeah, and then we did the double in 2013, which was, you know, hasn't been, hadn't been done for a while. So that was great, mate, because we won that. We won the, we played Hull FC, obviously. Yeah, Hull FC in that final, you know, and it was a horrible day. It was raining and everything like that. And it wasn't the best of games, but we, we, we got the job done, you know, we, we did what we had to do and uh, we, we ended up winning that and we had a great, great after party back in London, you know, in Mayfair, that was, that was special, that was, that was something else. But then, you know, generally like people, your teams, your teams win the, the Challenge Cup and, and uh, you know, the Denry Fox, you know, they fade, they fade out towards the, the, the Super League final, so, but no, we did the opposite, mate, we, um, when he had us all in check, you know, Matt Bitcoin, our conditioner, he's great, he's a great conditioner. And we had us all in check and like, we just carried on through and it didn't affect us one bit really. And it just shows how we, we, we played in those in the playoffs and stuff like that. And 
and then obviously we made it to the grand final again and then to play Warrington you know to, to be 16 16 two down you know they scored three quick tries in, in quick succession everyone you know we were knackered and stuff like that but we found a way to sort of get a try back just before half time and that really sort of kicked us on and then obviously they had some injuries uh, they got some injuries in the game in the second half which obviously uh, jolted their team you know, we took advantage of that you know, we were, you know, we're all rare and fully fit. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was one of the best comebacks for, for especially in the grand final. There's it's, it's no better game to do it in. You know, and to come back and to win, like, I think, what was it 24 16 or something like that? Um, yeah, that was amazing, mate. And, and to do the double again, that was uh, that was huge for me. So, and then from 2013, mate, uh, I had another year left on uh, my contract at Wigan. In that in that time, I played obviously. I, I've been. I was. I got made captain of the World Cup for Samoa at the end of the year. So um, I played in that. I got injured unfortunately in the the the, the warm up game, and, and that was me. I, I did my lateral ligaments and stuff. But but yeah, just talking to some players in the team like Tony Pulitzer and, and a few other boys during the South, they they'd signed for Salford, you know. And I was I was I had, you know I had my wand in my ear and stuff like that, trying to get me over. And I knew people wanted me back at Salford, so. It was something that I was really, um, you know, I really wanted to sort of take up. And, you know, and, and so I think contract talks sort of towards extension, extending my time at Wigan, it just kind of broke down because we weren't probably seeing eye to eye, really. And um, Salford did come in and, and offer, me, offer me a contract that it was, it was too hard to turn down, you know, especially if I had, I, um, you know, I had a little boy, a family. And it's just something that, you know, it's a short career in, in rugby. You know, you've got to, you have got to sort of, um, take every opportunity that you, you can get, really, and, and earn as much money as you can. So, as much as I loved it at Wigan, and I wish I could have stayed at Wigan my whole career and finished off there, uh, it just wasn't meant to be. You know, I went to Salford, and I don't regret it, mate. I don't because I, I had a great time at Salford. I wanted to be on that um, that ride that sort of my one was getting the players that we signed, and uh, yeah, it was it was a roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, I signed a four-year deal at Salford, but uh, did two years, man. Uh, it was a, the second year. It was quite things were happening uh, behind the scenes. It just wasn't right, and, and you know, I was I was captain of, of Salford, and uh, as much as you know, the great guys down at Salford, the people, um, you know, Watto, a great coach, and, and, and so far, and then we and we had Tim Sheens come across, man. What, what a great coach he is. Really, really, really privileged to sort of to meet him and, and to. to Experience what, what how his coaching was and he's great. Uh, yeah, things things are things about me off the, behind the scenes and uh, it just wasn't working out. So um, I managed to I managed to get out of my my contract and after two years, yeah, and then Lee came knocking. I had a few offers from other Super League clubs and stuff and and um, so Derek phoned me up and and. Uh, Invited me around to his house, so I went over my had a good chat with him. And obviously, I'd seen what Lee had been doing previous and, and how they sort of made the playoffs and just fell short and stuff. So, you know, I know Derek was wanting to obviously do it for that, for that, uh, 2000 and uh, was it 2016 year, so to go all out. So, he got me in, I was really impressed, and, and boom, I was over. I signed for Lee with you know, with the thing of, of trying to get, get these. To, to, to Super League and I think we signed Rene Matur, San Corey, Patterson, uh, obviously Rangi Chase, Willie Tonga. So man, we were signing some uh we were signing some great players and signed that signed that year, man. We had a we had a special team really. It was uh it was uh, it was a it was a great team to be a part of and um you know it was a great time obviously that year we we uh we played the first game. We lost the first game. I think it was to Batley. But then we went unbeaten the whole year. You know, obviously we played in the playoffs and we beat Salford, we beat Huddersfield, played at OKR, we beat them. So when we got to Super League, that was another sort of, not so my sort of CV thing of, of I sort of done my job there. You know, I did what I said, what, what I came, this is why I came. I came to Leeds to sort of help them get promoted. And, and that was another, that was a tick. So that was a special year. And, and then obviously I uh, made Super League. That was another great year, even though, even though we got relegated at the, uh, you know, at the end. Just, just throughout that year, just to some of the teams that we were upsetting. Obviously, uh, there was one time we beat Wigan. You know, we beat Wigan by fifty, and uh, that was funny. You know, it was because it because I, I knew all the boys, and it was it was, it was always it's always been it's always been sort of special playing against Wigan. Obviously, it was obviously it's 
it's a massive point for Wigan, but uh, just playing against them, especially for me, playing against my old mates and that to get the win over them, uh, that was uh, it was it was it was good on my part. So got some great good memories down at Lee, and then um, and then I think obviously we got relegated 2017. Obviously came back to Championship, and my, we still managed to keep. We still managed to have a lot of uh, sign some really good players. You know, in that three years, I was the time at Lee, we had we we went through a rotation of players, but the players that we were getting in were you know were quality players. So even when we got relegated back to, to Championship, we still had a really great team. You know, we had Bodine Thompson, Pete Mataltia, you know, Paddy Vavai, to people like that. We just we brought back. So yeah, we just we went through, mate. We went through Championship, and we were, and we were losing, mate. We were, we were losing a lot of games, and um, it was right to start of the season. I think we. Obviously, we got relegated, and then we started championship, but then we lost, and then we lost, and we lost, and we were like, we're going, what the hell's going on here? So, I think obviously, obviously, probably by around seven or eight, I think that's when uh, Derek decided to, uh, you know, call time on Duke C and 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 Kieran Pertle took over. When it, when Pertz took over, mate, it was uh, he's a great coach, and you know, I really got a lot of time for Pertz. You know, I rate him up there as. as as good as Marge and Wayne, he's a really spot on technical side, technical coach, and uh, yeah, you really want to, you you really want to play for him, and don't want to let him down. So he kind of turned our season around, and we started we started winning. Yeah, we started playing well, and uh, you know I was enjoying my rugby and stuff like that. And then um, what am I going on here? I'm losing my eyes. So 16, the 17 was Super League on it. So 17 was Super League. So this is yeah 2018. My we came to Toulouse and. We ended up winning, beating Toulouse down in Albion, which was a which was a great win. And then we had to go next week. We had to go to Toronto, uh, fly to Toronto, which was you know there were there were good trips, but to go to Toulouse and then fly back and then go to Toronto was a, was a bit of a bit of a thing. So we ended up losing there, but um, it sort of came down to sort of the back end of the 2000, just before the split off to the top eight. I think we were like ninth. Uh, we we played. I think I can't remember. We played. We played. Uh, Rochdale, I think it might have been Rochdale. Uh, we ended up beating them, and then after that game, like uh, we we're just walking around cheering the fans, and then just heard off a few of the boys like uh, other results haven't gone our way, which you know which should have. Like the, the teams that we needed to win had lost. Yeah, and then that's that knocked us out of the top of it, right? And uh, I was like, boom, well, that was us. This is this is crazy. And then Monday morning, mate, right? Monday morning, we had a, a meeting and. Like a review meeting, and, and Perch just came in and said, "Look, boys, uh, because we've not made this top eight, uh, there's going to be some cutbacks. You know, Derek's going to have to pull his money and stuff like that, and uh, everyone just be uh, just be on your telephone. We'll just wait for a call if you get one, whatever." So I spoke to my agent, and yeah, from then on, I just just found out that we have to release sort of uh, higher earner sort of players to get this thing down, and so and so, and. Uh, yeah, and that's what happened, mate. We all we all ended up dispersing, uh, like Pete Bodine, you know, a few of the boys, you know, Crooksy and, and, and Craig Hall, and that went went elsewhere, went to Hull. Um, yeah, so and then I was left. Um, I was good friends with um, Francis Cummins. You know, I, I did a bit of coaching for him for his uh, coaching academy, and uh, yeah, he just rang me up. Sort of, I think rang me up on the Tuesday or Wednesday. He said, "Hey, shall I, what's happening? I really want you to, you know." Would really like for you to come to, to witness and help us in this in, our, in, the, in the middle eights. I said, yeah, no problem. Like, yeah, if we, if we can get it sorted. And then I think Wednesday, Thursday, contracts were written up. And then Friday, I was doing team run at witness. So man, I've gone from Sunday Sunday to playing for Lee. It's just how it just shows how crazy uh, crazy it can be. And and. I ne- never experienced it in my life, really. Yeah, it was just it was a crazy week. So I've gone from playing, you know, being happy at Lee and sort of playing good, playing like I said, my, my best rugby for for a while uh, on the Sunday, and for the Friday, the following Friday, to be to running out and win this pitch, just doing team run at Woodness, and then playing Cass on Saturday against uh, for Woodness. Funnily enough, I scored my first try for Woodness on on, on that Saturday. But yeah, but then that's what led me into sort of 2019. Obviously, went to witness. Uh, we, we didn't do. Obviously, we, we didn't. Um, we didn't make that top four. Uh, we ended up getting relegated. And and yeah, that was a 
a second relegation under my belt, which is uh, it's never nice. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a blow. It was a blow. Um, it was it was it was bit, it was a bit of, it was a weird feeling for me because it, because obviously I just I just came to the club. But but anyway, I ended up renegotiating a, a contract and I ended up staying for 2019. Uh, we ended up getting perked over. Obviously, Lee weren't Lee were a bit in turmoil and and and. Stuff was was going on with that team, obviously the back end of 2018. So, so Perch decided to leave, and um, you know we managed to get and luckily we, we we managed to get him at Witness, and he did he did great for for what he had at Witness and, and for the you know, for the money and stuff and the plays that we had there at Witness. Uh, he did a great job, mate, and all the boys looked up to him and, and uh, you know dug in for him. And yeah, and then that year, 2019, yeah, obviously. We started off well. We, we came to Toulouse the first game. We ended up winning, beating them, um, which was good. And then second game, I think we played someone. And then uh, and the next minute, boom, admin going to administration. So just saying, my career that that's a horrible part. Of, I've I've never experienced that. Like um, basically, we you know we sat around in a, in a circle, all the boys and and the, the administrators are in, and they're having to do cutbacks. And then you've got sort of perks coming in and. He's got a list of like you, 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 you. Come here, come, and then in the office, and then from their their contracts are, are done, ripped over, and then we're all like sitting there, just going, "What the hell is going on here?" So, uh, it's, it's it's not a nice experience to go through, especially when you know it is you know people's livelihoods on on the line. Obviously, the the the, the great town of witness and and the the fans that support, you know, that that bubble of of witness fans there, they sort of got around the team and. Got around the club and the town and, and raised all this money and stuff like that and it was it was great to see and you know it was it was really special it was it was I could see what well, I could see like how witness are that kind of club and, and the, the the people they have around that around witness is really really that rugby league team and I could really see that so yeah and then we managed to, to come back and uh, we played on there and we, we we did well uh, obviously the highlight was highlight of that year was getting to uh, that eighteen eighty five. Uh, cup final. We played Lee in uh, the semi-final at, at Lee. So yeah, going back there for witness and then playing against Lee. You know, playing against Mickey and that, and then Liam Hood and you know they were my mates. They're my good mates. Yeah, I, was, I think we're the kind of the underdogs. No one expected us to win. I think it was all been built up. You know, it was it was you know Lee's Lee, Lee's Lee's going to uh, to Wembley and stuff like that. Uh, Derek, you know, because Derek had sponsored the 1885 Cup and stuff, so it was all kind of built up for the sort of Lee thing. And you know, I think we came in and we spoiled the party. Really, I think no one expected it, but uh, it was a bit sweet for me. You know, as much as I, as much as I loved, um, you know, getting to Wembley uh, because because look, it would have been my third time being back at Wembley, and that, that was special to me. Um, obviously, obviously, it was bitter because obviously it was against. Against the club that I had really enjoyed playing for, and the, the the Lee fans and everyone are a great, great set of fans. You know, it's a good, it's another rugby town. Like witness, it's you know Lee's Lee's massive in, in uh, Lee rugby is massive in Lee, so and the fans really get behind you. Yeah, it was a bit of sweet moment, and um, but anyway, we get to the final, and yeah, and obviously we play Sheffield, and we didn't have our best games, but. Ended up losing, so it was an experience, and I think for a lot of the players, uh, they'd never been to Wembley, experienced Wembley before. So yeah, and then when we played that season out, and then come 2020, um, my contract was up, and I, there, I had a few options on the table, but I didn't really want to take them up, and because I think the cl clubs, the, the clubs that were just we were just really far away and stuff like that. So you know, and I've, I've got three kids, and and was like, oh, what we're going to do? And then, um, obviously, Paddy Vavai from my, you know, team right here at Toulouse. He, I'm good friends with him. Through, uh, through meeting him at Lee and that. Um, he just got in touch with age. Hey, come over here, come to Toulouse. Like, our coach really wants you and stuff like that. And I was like, spoke to, spoke to the missus and was like, should we do it? I said, yeah, let's just do it. So yeah, that's how I came. That's how I came about to to join in Toulouse. Headed over in November, and uh, yeah, we've been there since. I oh, really love it, mate. I really love it here in Toulouse. It's uh, just say like we obviously before the COVID started, um, we were flying. We had, we, we've got a great team, and obviously we're we're unbeaten. You know, we're top of the table along with I, don't know, I think Lee and a few other teams, but we're at that top. And 
yeah, and I was enjoying it. And uh, you know, I was enjoying being a part of a team of, of sort of traveling to the UK and, and playing and then staying in a hotel and then traveling back. It's, it was good to it's good to say like to like I live in Toulouse, you know, South of France. It's you know you say that to people, it's you know, it's kind of envy because it's 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 a lovely it's a beautiful part of, of France, especially with the sun and the weather and that it's uh you can't beat it. So but yeah, and then obviously COVID happened and then we got straight into lockdown, but uh, you know, we've ended up seeing it and, um, you know, we really love it here. Uh, I think the team, we're really building for next for, for next year, obviously, when we do start. But yeah, going into 2021, I think uh, our, that, that's going to be our aim to sort of um, make Super League and we're really going to make a massive push for it. But for the time being now, I think we're all enjoying it here and uh, yeah, it's just... We're all learning French as well. I'm, I'm trying to anyway. Um, my kids speak French. My kids, my kids speak better French than me. So you know, which is which is good. We always asking them what does this mean and oh, what does that mean? Keep the sun and all that. So yeah, as I said, we're really building for for 2021 and uh, really looking forward to it. So uh, that's me up to now. And um, yeah, look, I'm th I'm 35, but there's no way I'm retiring yet, mate. I've still got plenty left in the tank. And it's funny because I see see a lot of players that I played with. Um, you know, who are my age, who I came through academy and stuff and came through rugby and, and they're my age and they're all retired and like, they're all retired and all, all are retiring now and I'm thinking to myself, should I be retiring? I was like, nah. I think this, this, this lockdown's made, sort of my body out really, which is sort of, probably had, it's probably given me another couple, two more, two, three more years. So I'll be playing till I'm 40, hopefully if I can. So uh, try and beat Mozza, you know, Moz played till he's 38 or Mickey. But now I'm feeling great. My body's in good nick. So yeah, I'll, I'll, as long as, as I'll stay in, I'll stay in France and and to lose as long as I can. And you know, if it's not to lose, then I'll definitely stay in France, whether it's go to French League or whatever. I don't know, but you know, I'm really enjoying it here. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not looking to retire or looking to go back to the UK anytime soon. So uh, that's, that's that's about it for now. So we'll see, we'll see where this goes. So um, yeah, just through my international career, my um, when I was playing over here, you get I was I was playing for Lancashire. So I, when I was coming through when I was 13, 14, I was getting picked for Lancashire. And we used to play against Yorkshire, and then like 15, and then like under age 16, I started getting picked for England, and under 18, I got picked for England. Yeah, and then we uh, I got picked for England under 18s, and then we went to I went to New Zealand uh, for two weeks. Played the Junior Kiwis, um, we beat them. Played them the first game, lost the second game, but playing against Isaac Luke, Frank Pono Salah, C.S. Uh, Soliola, you know, Simon Mannering, you know, they're all in the junior Kiwis. But then we went to Australia for um, for a week and we played the uh, Aussie schoolboys. And, uh, you know, then played against Greg Inglis. Greg Inglis was fullback. Um, you know, Michael Dobson, Junior Moores, Frankie Winterstein, who I'm with now, he was, he was in the Aussie, he was in those, he was junior schoolboys. So, my idea was, uh, we played some great players, but our England team, we had, you know, we had Lee Smith, we had James Graham, uh, David Allen, we had, you know, the Simon Griggs, everyone, I think probably once to, one to 17, Chris Ashton, he was playing, um, one to 17, I, 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 like, was playing Super League or, no experience or was close to so we had a really stacked team then so yeah we ended up beating them for the first time in Australia for an academy team and then um, and then when it came to uh, obviously when I made my debut at, at Wigan um, that's when when you, when you go professional then then you can sort of decide who you want to sort of go for England or New Zealand or whatever I decided to go with New Zealand and then uh, 06 2006 so yeah two, two years later I got injured during the season. I just come back, and I was probably really like my third game back. And uh, Blue McKinnon uh, was Kiwi coach, still coming over just for just for a couple of weeks to play uh, Great Britain in a one-off test. I got the phone call and said, "Age, like, I want you know, I want you to play." So yeah, that was my first experience for the Kiwis. Obviously, learning the hacker and stuff, and my walking out, walking out against GB. Uh, um, it was at Nosey Road. That was that was special, and then uh, obviously singing the the Kiwi national anthem, and and then doing the haka. You know, I was with you know, I was with Leslie Vinacola, Shantay Hapri, all those my massive huge players. Yeah, my first time I was doing the haka, and uh, I was at the back, and I, I was just I was remembering everything. And as soon as like as soon as we as soon as the, the last sort of thing we finished, my all I was seeing was black 
black and white stars in my eyes. I couldn't see a thing. Luckily, I was starting on the bench, showing that I was a bit busy. So that's, <laughs> that's what makes you. I was just walking off. And then, so yeah, that was my first taste of, of uh, international, in the international game. And then uh, come 07, um, I get the call off uh, John Acklin, who was just the Samoa coach. Um, he said, look, age, really want you on board. We're building to the World Cup. You know, we need to qualify. I uh, really like your team. So, yeah, I said I jumped at the chance. So, yeah, that's when I sort of joined Samoa and they came over and we ended up playing. Um, I think we played Lebanon and who was it? It was another team. I can't remember, but we, we won both those games and we ended up qualifying for, uh, for the World Cup. So, 2008 comes around the World Cup, get picked for that. So, fly over. Um, man, that was a, what a, what a great time that was, like six or seven weeks in Australia. Like... We had a week in South, so we, they flew us to Samoa first, and we had a week there, training and getting to meet the villagers and, and going around the villages. And obviously, that's my first time that sort of my represent my grandparents, like my parents where they're from and Samoa and that. So it's just meeting family that I'd never seen, you know, meeting cousins and all taking me out. So that was a great experience there. And then uh, yeah, we ended up playing in the World Cup. Uh, obviously, we didn't do as, as as good as we were supposed to because we had a real good team, but. Uh, just playing with players like Nigel Wagner and, and Matt Utai, Tony Poutour, Frank Poutour, just the list goes on. Um, being involved in that sort of in that team was great. And it was like real family. So obviously we got knocked out. Um, we got knocked out there. And then 2009 came. Um, we played in Kearns. Went up to Kearns in, 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 uh, in Queensland. I ended up playing Cook Islands in a test. Of, we lost that one. But... That was for like the specific cup test. You know, I think there was three of us, but uh, we, we got knocked out straight away. So 2010, went back to New Zealand, played for Samoa again. We played the Kiwis and then we played Tonga uh, in Parramatta. Um, yeah, great. And we we, uh, we lost against the Kiwis, but then we beat Tonga. And yeah, 2010, we do that. We, we lose against the Kiwis and then uh, we beat Tonga. Um, again, mate, it's always, it's always, special when you're when you play international and sort of represent Samoa as like because from my grandma like my mom both my mum and dad and their grandparents you know uh, both uh, both Samoan so to really experience that culture and that side of my sort of family that I didn't I didn't know that was uh it was it was great uh 2011-12 I didn't I, I wasn't involved then and then uh come 2013 uh just after after our double double win with with Wigan uh, I get the call to, yeah, for the World Cup over here. Oh, I was in, in the UK, sorry. So, and at the time, uh, Roy Asatasi was going to be the captain, but he, he couldn't make the he, he couldn't make the team, I think, due to injury or something. So, uh, there was a spot there, a captain spot there, and obviously we trained a few times. And yeah, Matt Parrish, the coach, just came up to me and said, "Hey, uh, I'd like you to be the captain." So, uh, yeah, it was real, real privilege and real honour to sort of to to be captain of of Samoa and but unfortunately obviously we played in the warm-up game and just before the, the World Cup kicked off and yeah just a freak accident and a tackle we did my leg and, and that was me and that was me for the whole trip really so I stayed with the team and just and so I've been travelled to France and then yeah stayed with the team and experienced experience that and uh, yeah obviously we got knocked out at this, uh, one stage and, and then that was it then and then from 2013, I just I decided I was I didn't want to be playing international anymore because it was it was just taking it was a bit it was a lot for your body, especially when we played in the UK, we played like 30 odd games, and then you're playing you know you're playing another two or three four games. It was just I was just like ah, my body needs a rest, you know, like a holiday with with my family. So uh, so yeah, and then that's been like that ever since, and uh, just been enjoying sort of the preseason off, you know, when our season finishes and. Time, spending time with the, with the kids and stuff like that. So, 